for Good Day, I will be presenting the topic about the introduction of exotic species. And here is the outline of my presentation. So number one is what is exotic species? Number two is what are the reasons for introducing exotic species? Number three is does introduction of exotic species bad? The fourth is common introduced exotic species in the Philippines. And last is if there is a law prohibiting the introduction of the exotic species in the Philippines. So let's start. So what is exotic species? So exotic species are flora or fauna that is not originally located in the area. They are usually transported through human interest and other purposes. So here are the reasons for introducing exotic species in the country. So first is it is used as for pets, aesthetic purposes, pest control, and aquaculture and agricultural improvement. So does introduction of exotic species bad? So the answer is yes and no. So for the positive note, the introduction of exotic fish for fisheries and aquaculture is a big help in increasing the food supply. The most common exotic species that is used for food consumption in the Philippines is the tilapia, which is originated from the freshwaters of Africa. And for the negative, some exotic species is host to pests and diseases that native species do not have a natural protection against it. And the lack of natural predator for exotic species disrupt the food chain in the area. Thus, exotic species sometimes become invasive. So what are the common introduced exotic species here in the Philippines? So here they are. So the first one in the example is the golden kohol or the golden apple snail. So in, it was introduced during the 1980s in the Philippines as an alternative food supply for the low-income Filipino farmers. But its rapid population growth and wide distribution threaten the rice production as it feeds on the rice stem that destroys the whole plant. The next is the mahogany. So it was introduced in 1907 as a park tree in the Metro Manila. As of these days, it is used for timber industry. On the negative side, so it prevents the native trees from growing and the decaying leaves of this tree also alter the acidity of the soil and it prevents other organisms to thrive in the area. The next introduced species in the Philippines is the king toad. So it was introduced in the Philippines during the 1930s as a pest control in the sugar cane plantation. However, they are a voracious eater that devour more food than the native species in the area. Their population also grows rapidly that it outnumbered the native frog species in the area. The next is the Eurasian tree sparrow or commonly known as Maya here in the Philippines. So it was allegedly introduced by the Spanish colonizer and due to its lack of natural predators in the, here in the Philippines and its ability to adapt easily in the environment become the reason why its population is very high, particularly in the major urban cities of the country. So the next is the janitor fish. So it was originated in the fresh waters of the South America and it was first introduced as an aquarium fish because of its ability to clean fish tanks. So it is also being said that the introduction of the janitor fish in the lakes and other fresh water in the country is the accidental releasing of this fish in the water bodies. And the last on my list is the rice eel. So it was introduced as a pest control to control the population of the golden snails or the golden kohol, which is a pest in the rice fields of the Philippines. However, it's is a also voracious eater that feeds more than the natural species in the area. So its behavior to dug hole in the rice paddies affect the irrigation system in the rice field and it affects the overall rice production in the rice industry of the country. Is there a law that prohibiting the introduction of exotic species in the Philippines? And the answer is, Yes, so the Wildlife Research Conservation and Protection Act, also known as the 
Republic Act number 9147. So under the Section 13, it was said that no exotic species so shall be introduced in the country unless a clearance from the secretary or the authorized representative is obtained. In case where introduction is allowed, it shall be subjected to environmental impact study, which shall focus on the bioecology, socioeconomic, and related aspect of the area where the species will be introduced. The proponent shall be required to secure the prior informed consent from the local stakeholders. So here is a short message for exotic pet lovers out there. So if you are an exotic pet lover, be responsible enough in handling your pets to prevent it from making its way to our natural ecosystem. And with that, I end my presentation and thank you for listening.